Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Job Nimbus 101 workshop. We are so excited to have you here with us today. Today, we'll be concluding our trilogy of workshops on our work orders in Job Nimbus. Today, in fact, is our return of the king. However, I can promise you there will be much less crying <laughs> and only one ending. My name is Logan. And I'm Daniel. And as Logan said, we are finishing up our series of work orders. Today, we are going to give you tips and tricks on how to use those work orders effectively. We've got a question for you. Are you a company that uses, that needs to keep track of custom information for your contacts and your jobs? Well, not a lot of our companies know, but you can also do that for your work orders, which is very powerful and very effective, especially if you need to keep specific information for your subcontractors. You can also use these custom fields to create automations, and we'll go over one, one automation that uses custom fields. We'll also talk about other automations that will really help you take your work orders to the next level. So let's get into it. All right. So if we are going to go ahead and make a work order, we are going to click on work orders, and let's look at what happens when we make a new work order. Now there's a lot of things we looked at when we did our second episode, for instance, using an estimate versus entering it manually and all of these line items that help us realize what needs to be done on the work order. Of course, there's also these up at the top, things like the design template that tells us what sort of work order it is, the start and due date, so on and so forth. Everything from design template down to subcontractor, these are in every single job in MC account. And if you go to make your own work order, you're gonna see all of those. But if you come below that and take a look at these, these are all specific to our account. They're things we added in because we thought they'd be helpful for our business. The ability to do things like, for instance, put the square footage on the roof, choose the color for the shingles, and so forth. And you can do all this as well. Exactly. So let's go into it and teach you where and how you can create custom fields. Now, if you're already using contact fields and job fields, you might be thinking, I need to go to my settings. You'd be right, because that's exactly where your work order fields are as well. And hey, look, there it is. So let's click on work order fields. And this is where you'll keep track of all the custom fields in your account. You can manage them all. You can edit, hide, or delete them. Or you can even add in new work order fields. So let's go ahead and click on this and go over a few of them. So different types that you can add in are date, which is self-explanatory. You can add in a decimal, which can be used as a currency, like we have in our contract amount. You can add in a number, which can be very useful for a serial number, or if you need to keep track of a pin code for a gated community. Uh, you can add in a string of text for whatever reason. A Boolean, which is a yes or no, or like a checkbox, like we have down here for if our con subcontractor is paid, which is probably important to keep track of. And then we have options list where you can add in a whole bunch of different options to a drop down menu, such as we have for our color custom field, which we'll show you in a bit. Now, what's really neat is you can keep track of this information right on the template itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at a template that we edited earlier, which is our roofing work order template. So let's go in and edit and we can add these fields to any of these gray boxes here. We chose to add some fields to the above items. If we click on in that gray box, it'll pull up this content window where you can add in information, such as we chose to add in the color custom field and the square footage custom field. That way, when we send this off to our subcontractor, they know what color it's supposed to be and how, and how big the roof is. So let's go ahead and add in a, another custom field here. So let's, let's type in enter here and you can easily add in custom fields by clicking on the insert template field drop down, and then coming down to work order custom fields. So let's say that we not only want to keep track of the color and the square footage, but we also want to know how many tenants are in this a building as well. So Let's add in a, a, the tenant's work order custom field and type that in. So that way our subcontractors know how many people are living there as well. So let's save the changes and click save template. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at these things in action. We're gonna go ahead and head back to Grisilla. 
and we're just going to edit the existing work order that we have. So we're going to go ahead and click edit. We're going to change the design template to the new one. Let's also fill out some of our custom fields. I think this contract amount is $5,001. The serial number is that. The color, do you like blue green or just green, Dan? I'm more partial to blue green. All right, blue green, love to see that on a roof. And our square footage is 1400. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save this work order and let's take a look at what changed. So if we look at this, we see the color and the square feet. And if we'd had tenants and home entered, it would show right there. Since we didn't, it's blank. Up at the top, you'll also see this contract amount is populated and this serial number, even though we didn't enter either of those into the work order. So it wouldn't be obvious to, for instance, a subcontractor that we sent this to. They would only see what's here, but internally we could keep this information. That way we can say, hey, this information needs to go out to the subcontractor. We wanna keep this information for ourselves. And that's how we could get both of those into custom fields and then in where people can see them. Exactly, and that is a great way to keep track of information, but you can also use some of this information to create automations. So let's actually talk about some automations you can create in your own account. Now we're not going to be building these out. If you wanna learn how to build automations, go ahead and check out our automation series. And that goes in depth on how to build an automation. But let's go back into our settings to take a look at some automations. So click on automation and let's scroll all the way down until we see these work order automations that we created earlier. And let's talk about them. So a lot of times when you're creating work orders for contact, there will be multiple work orders under the same contact. And once all work orders are completed, you then move the contact into the work completed status. But you can't do that before all work orders are completed. So we built this automation to help us out with that. If we go in here and take a look at it, what this automation does is it says, if a work order under a contact has been moved into the completed status, it creates a task for the sales rep to go in and check that contact status. And if all work orders have been completed, then move the contact into the work completed status. Pretty simple. It's a real good way to remind our sales reps or our team members to keep track of the contact status while we're working on work orders. Absolutely. This next one is a little bit different, but also serves a useful purpose. If we take a look at this automation, this is a time-based automation, and it's interested in the start date and time of our work order. So assuming we've added that in, then 24 hours before the start date of the work order, it's going to, if the status is not completed, in other words, if we still have this to do and didn't somehow get it done early, it's going to send out this email work order reminder. And who it's going to send it to is the related contact. The related contact for a work order is the person that you created it under. In our case, that's Chris Hellegrim. Now let's take a look at that email before we move on. And that's kept in our templates. We're gonna scroll all the way down our emails until we find our work order reminder. Now you'll see here that we've used template fields in a number of places here inside the template. For instance, we see it here, we see these here as well. Specifically, these ones that use work order are very interesting. We can find them by going to insert template field, work order. Here's our end date, our start date, and so forth. These are really powerful, but they're fairly limited in how they can be used. For instance, if I was sending an email from a customer, they could have any number of work orders on. And so the system wouldn't know what work order to pull that information from. These are only useful when we are emailing a work order directly using an automation. So in this case, it's fantastic. I'm gonna send this out. It's gonna say, hey, this is the time up here in the subject line. It's gonna give us the time here and the record type. It's very powerful and very specific. It's great for your company and it helps keep in contact with your customers without wasting your time. Exactly. So let's take a look at the last automation here, way down here of work order production manager verification check. Now what this does is it uses a custom field, our contract amount. And it says, if the contract amount is greater than 5,000, like in Grisella Grimm's case, that was $5,001, 
It tells our production manager, in this case, Charles Schnell, to verify the account, make sure that everything is in line before we do our work. That right there is going to keep our customers happy. It's going to keep our company happy. Everyone's happy. And these are uh, these three automations are really powerful and will really help your company move to the next level. And we hope that you found some value in using custom fields and automations together to really take your make your work orders work for you.